Hey everyone, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial where we show you the exact tools and processes we use within our real estate business. Today is a new video on the rental property analyzer. So some of you have already downloaded the free tool from IncomeDigs.com. If you haven't, I recommend you do so. It is completely free and it is a great way to analyze your rental properties. And we try to build a lot into this, uh, jam pack in a lot of key performance indicators or KPIs. And uh, this, the latest version that is on the website is, is updated and um, it works pretty nicely. So give it a try, it is free. Um, so all you need is Excel and you can bring it into Google Sheets if you'd rather. Uh, what we're gonna do today is just uh, bring you through the uh, the template and and show you how it works and so that you can start plugging in your own rental properties. Now this will work for whether you're doing apartment buildings on a large scale and big properties or you know even single family double uh, triple something like that it would work as well. So um, you know just uh, try it for your own business and uh, we'd appreciate your feedback. We are going to just fill in some info here and just show you how it works. So let's pretend we have a deal. You know, we get the marketing package from a realtor and we want to plug in the numbers to see if it's a good deal and something that we want to take on. So we're gonna fill in the information here. So the address is just where the um, building is, the type. So here you can select what this is. Let's say it's got 14 units and I don't know what the square footage would be, maybe 14,000. When are you going to purchase it? This is just an anticipated date so that the model can forecast into the future. This does not need to be anything special. Okay, let's say that we're going to buy this property. The marketing package it had, that uh, we got has it at $1.2 million. All right, now as we start, the numbers are all going to turn red because we don't have any revenue in there yet. Don't worry about that. The down payment, uh, now this you can put in a, a number or if you want and you know how to use Excel uh, formulas, you can just do a, let's say 20% times your purchase price okay so let's say 240 and then this is an additional percentage down that we need for closing costs so another two percent maybe it's 1.5 percent okay so the total cash needed to close is 258,000 okay and that's important because we are going to be calculating a cash on cash return okay now we will most likely have a loan for this property as well. Now we could do equity partners, that's a little bit more advanced, but let's pretend we just have one single loan, okay? So the loan value, let's just say it's the difference equals purchase price minus the down payment. Oops, looks like I didn't do all of that. Purchase price minus the down payment, all right? 960 is the loan, okay? Uh, interest rate, we can keep it at 5%, maybe we'll do 5.5%, zero points. Let's say it's an amortization of 25 years with a balloon, let's say no balloon. All right, so if you do no balloon, then you can just make the balloon after the same as the amortization. All that means is that I'm not going to pay it off early, I'm going to let the loan go out for the whole 25 years. Now this is a nice tool, and we can play with this in a little bit. If you're shopping for financing, you can use this to plug in uh, your different scenarios, and I'll show you that as we go. All right, we're gonna skip financing loan two. We're gonna skip the equity partnerships for now. Let's go down to the income, all right? Now this, again, you're going to use what they give you in the marketing package potentially, but you might be able to forecast ahead. We do have the annual increase in percentages, so you can play with that as well. All right, for this, let's just assume that we're getting 152,000 annually, all right? And as we start to input our revenue, you see the numbers start to look better because now we're actually making something, which is great, okay? So that's our scheduled rental income. Now, if you'd prefer, if you're given it uh, in a, a monthly format, you could instead uh, do it monthly as, as well. So you can say 14,000 per month and it'll update accordingly as well. All right, let's do, let's do monthly, let's just say, actually, let's move back to annual, that, that makes more sense. And let's do that 152. All right, your vacancy, it's important to usually have something there, expecting sometimes we'll have some vacancies. Other income, this would be to handle, maybe do laundry or parking or garages, something like that, okay? And here's some expenses that you can now fill in. Now, we do default to you, and you can change this, but we default to a property management and repairs and maintenance at 5% of your rental income. That might sound super low to you, that might sound high to you, it's up to you to adjust that. For this case, let's pretend that property management costs 10%, and repairs and maintenance stays at that 
and let's fill in the rest, all right? Maybe we have an insurance policy on this or an expected insurance policy of $3,200. Uh, advertising, let's say that we spend $100 a month in advertising, so that's $1,200. Now, again, you can do $100 monthly, all right? So if your numbers are monthly and that's easier for you, obviously we can forecast it out, but uh, that helps, right? Uh, landscaping and plowing. If you're lucky enough like I am to live in Buffalo, you'll have to pay for that plowing. Uh, legal fees, maybe accounting, something like that. Supplies, if you're providing those, light bulbs, common area things. Uh, property tax, let's say we uh, spend 10000 per year in property tax. And utilities, maybe we're paying for general lighting. Um, let's say we're paying 300 per month in utilities. All right. And water and sewer, let's say um, we're paying know, 2400 on the year, okay? And this is gonna change. Now you're going to want to take the marketing package. Maybe you'll put in the exact numbers. Maybe you'll put in some numbers that you anticipate after you get the property up and running the way you want, all of that, okay? So you can see that what we're given with punching in these numbers is some important KPIs. The first of which is the cap rate at which we're purchasing. So at a $1.2 million purchase price, and we have an expected net income of 98,000, our cap rate is 8.17%. So depending on your market, that might be good, that might be bad, we're not, I, you know, I'm not sure, but that's for you to, to use to, to judge your purchase, okay? We have a cash on cash return. Um, debt coverage ratio is going to be important for that loan. The gross rent multiplier, the 2% rule, as many are used to from bigger pockets. Internal rate of return, net present value in the payback year. Now, one thing we have here down here is the resale. All right, so we want you to anticipate when you're going to sell this. Okay, so let's pretend I sell after 10 years. And then there's a way to determine what the sale price will be. Okay, now we have three different ways of calculating it. We can either use an annual appreciation, meaning that every year our property goes up in value by, in this case, 2%. Or we can say a cap rate at sale. So let's pretend that at year 10, we're going to sell it at an 8% cap rate. Or we can use a fixed, um, a fixed number. Like, let's just say, okay, I know that I'm going to sell it for 1.5 million, maybe. And the way you select what the system uses is you click this drop down and you have your three choices of what to use. So if I want to use that value, I click value and then the sale price will populate with the value. All right, if you want to use annual appreciation, it'll use that 2%. Let's make it 2.5%, all right. And if you want to use the cap rate, you can do that as well, all right? So let's use my annual appreciation. Let's say I'm gonna sell after 10 years, okay? And what we have are some important figures here. We have a cash on cash return, we have the cap rate, our internal rate of return. Now our net present value is positive, which is a good thing. Uh, that means that this is a, you know, a net positive investment, which is which is nice, okay? We do have a snapshot of our P&L here, monthly and, and annually. We do have that detailed as well in this P&L snapshot. All right, so you can click that. And um, based on your snapshot year in the dashboard, so in the dashboard I have snapshot year one, it's going to give me the PL, the monthly PL and the annual PL. All right, which is really useful for understanding how much I'm going to net um, every month. And here's NOI, and then cash flow after I pay my debt service as well. Now let's play with that debt service. I, I mentioned that we have a 25 25. Let's say that hey, we'd really like to pay this loan off faster. Could we afford to do a 20 and 20? All right, so if I do that, my debt coverage ratio goes down because I now I'm spending more per month in debt service. However, I'm gonna be paying less in interest over the, the term of the property. So if I can't afford it, it would probably be, be worthwhile, all right? Now you see too, a couple metrics that I like to, to track are the annual cash flow per unit and the monthly cash flow per unit. So I got 14 units here. You know, you might have a target of, let's say, $100, $100 cash per door, right? So that, that would help you to determine that. To play around with these loans, you might even be able to go all the way down to 15. Now, of course, that's going to bring your debt coverage ratio way low, but um, this allows you to, to play with it. You can also play with your annual rental income. We can pretend that this goes up 0.5% per year, which is going to make this deal look a little bit better, or potentially 1% per year. Okay, and then we can take our snapshot and say, all right, in year four, 
what does my rent look like? What does my P&L look like? All right, so now this is my P&L snapshot of 2022. I'm making a little bit more now in cash because of my annual increase in rent. All right, now you'd probably be wise to also increase some of your expenses, so um, keep that in mind as well as you go through. All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you is the capital improvements. So this is where you could say, maybe when I purchase a property or uh, a little bit down the road, I'm gonna need to do some work. So what you'd put in here is the year, and for this, just put the year number, so like year one, and how much money you're gonna spend, let's say $45,000 to do the roof. And this is gonna update your whole, um, you know, your cash return and everything. Now you can see your annual cash flow year by year on this cash flow tab. Year zero is the year we purchase the property. You can see that it's the net cash outlay that we spend to get the property. And then everything else takes into account our revenue. You can see that the revenue is going up every year because of that 1% increase. Um, also though, there are vacancies going up because it's a percentage. And we keep everything else pretty much the same, but you can see our net operating cash flow per year. Let's open this up a little bit. Um, and then we sell the property in 2028 and our net cash after sale, 1.428, uh, gives us cash flow here. Now, all of these cash flows, those go into our returns, okay? So really, this model accounts for everything. And to the extent you use it, you might not. If you're just doing a duplex, you might not care about all this stuff, but it can handle everything. So I encourage you to give it a try. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. One, Actually, one last thing. We also have the amortization schedule, okay? So this would show you everything uh, for those loans that we have to do. Just so I'd point that out. But uh, give it a try and let me know if you have any questions. Either comment on the YouTube video or email me directly, nick at incomedigs.com, and I can answer your questions and, and make sure that this is uh, meeting your standards. All right. So for now, thanks for watching. Check out everything we have available on incomedigs.com. We just uh, redid the website. We have a bunch of free tools available for you. And uh, we really want you to be using them because they, they help you to analyze properties and to analyze your systems and processes to make sure you're ready to scale and automate your business. All right. Thanks a lot for watching.